The 1980s gave way to some of the craziest styling choices across all industries. The space age synthwave style of design was everywhere, and everyone was trying to cash in on the action. But in the motorcycle world, Suzuki would go on to release the most Blade Runner styled motorcycle ever, the ultimate product of 80s styling and sheer brutish performance. This is the story the first generation Suzuki Katana. Hello everyone, welcome to Rare Motorcycles. This is the channel where we dive into the past and explore some of the world's most iconic and rare motorcycles. If you want to see more short form documentaries on unique bikes like the Suzuki Katana or others like the GPZ 900R, then make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button as we are dropping new videos every week. But now, let's dive right into the history, the specs, and just what made this motorcycle so special. The Katana itself was actually born as a design study concept in the late 70s and early 80s. But once it was revealed, the public fell so madly in love with its new space age look that Suzuki knew they had to find a way to bring this bike to life in the form of a production motorcycle, which would actually make it the first ever mass-produced Japanese production bike that was designed by an outside design studio. In the Katana's case, this design studio was Target Design out of Germany. They were the ones that penned the out-of-this-world styling for the Katana. The styling of the Katana wasn't just an exercise in pushing the boundaries of visuals. It was also completely functional. See, the uniquely designed front fairing of the Katana was actually designed in a wind tunnel to flow around the rider on a motorcycle, and it was the first of its kind to utilize a front fairing purely for the aerodynamic purposes on a road bike. See, the rider of the motorcycle will create drag by breaking up the natural airflow off the smooth curves of the bike. But when they designed the aerodynamics with the rider in mind, Suzuki was greatly able to increase the top speed and lower the drag on the katana. Especially at a time when every other motorcycle coming out of Japan kind of looked the same, the katana dared to be different. With its bold design at launch and the eventual integration of a pop up headlight version of the katana during its production run, this bike was unmistakable anywhere in the world. Yet, with such a unique and futuristic look, the Katana still ended up utilizing more traditional, tried-and-true means for its power plants than most of its other contemporary rivals at the time. They did this in order to keep the price down. Suzuki figured that if they could price this new motorcycle very reasonably, then the gamble that they took on the design would be more likely to pay off given the broader market segment that could afford the bike. When the Katana was initially released in 1982, lots of other manufacturers were working to dial in their liquid-cooled engines. Suzuki for the Katana wanted no part of this, and they incorporated a newer version of their tried-and-true 1074cc air-cooled dual-overhead cam in Line 4, which was technically dated technology-wise compared to most of the competition. But with some of the tweaks that they made to it, it was still able to put out about 110 total horsepower at 8,500 RPM and about 70 foot-pounds of torque, which was still the best in its class, even being a more dated platform. The Katana also utilized a very similar frame to the existing Suzuki GSX 1100 ET, with some modifications made to the front end to give it that new low slung look that the Katana was going for with its lower handlebars. The Katana also utilized a revised adjustable suspension setup that had a hydraulic anti-dive unit in the front and adjustable rear shocks. On paper, from a performance standpoint, the Katana was a really fast bike in a straight line, and it could top out at around 140 miles per hour. Couple that with its suspension improvements over the base GSX 1100ET, and the Katana seemed like a fairly compliant handler, although most testing agreed that it certainly did leave more to be desired in the handling department than it did in the power department. So, kind of think of the Katana performance-wise 
as a Japanese muscle bike for the era. And there was one other major drawback for the katana, and that was the riding position. In an effort to make what is undoubtedly one of the coolest looking motorcycles ever made, and certainly the coolest bike available at the time, the ergonomics of the katana became, well, an afterthought. And it turns out, for something that you would ideally spend a lot of time riding to enjoy, that ended up being quite an issue. See, the placement of the foot pegs and the lower handlebars left most katana riders feeling sort of squished while they were riding it. And no matter how much you fiddled with your new adjustable suspension to try and help ride quality, it didn't matter because the seating position still wasn't great. And it didn't matter how cool the katana looked. If your back hurt after a test ride, chances were that people were not going to buy it. And that certainly hurt the katana's sales figures. The buyer profile that had the expendable cash for motorcycles tended to typically skew a little bit older. And while these people appreciated the performance of the katana, they still wanted something a bit more comfortable and a bit more traditional looking, which is where the striking new katana lost a lot of them. The katana, for all of its hype and innovative design, ended up being not really a crazy sales success for Suzuki, and I'd probably consider it to be a sales dud by comparison. And it was actually discontinued in the European market just after five years. It still, however, remained in production in the Asian markets until the early 90s, with limited time re-releases in between. Suzuki has since re-released the Katana nameplate on bikes in the 2000s, and while these newer versions of the Katana are fast, I still think they lack some of that secret sauce that made the initial one so iconic. Overall, the Katana was never really the crazy sales success that Suzuki hoped it would be, but it did become an absolutely iconic motorcycle that even 40 years later, people still see one and know exactly what it is. Which makes it an advantageous buy for a collector today, given its sub $10,000 price tag for one in really nice condition and with rougher project quality Katanas trading for under $5,000. So if you want to live out that 80s synthwave cyberpunk fantasy, then there is no better bike to do it with than one of the original Suzuki Katanas. But that concludes the story of Suzuki's insanely stylish and insanely 80s Katana motorcycle. If you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like and also share this video with other enthusiasts. Also, please make sure that you are subscribed to the Rare Motorcycles YouTube channel and smash the notification bell for more documentary style videos just like this on the world's most interesting motorcycles. Until next time, enthusiasts.